On the morning of the 4th of May 1945, the lead troops of the US 3rd Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron of the 3rd Cavalry Group began crossing the German border into Austria at the town of Brunel am Inn. Throughout the day, the unit received orders, followed by counter orders, as to where it was to go and what it was to do once in Austria, and it would not be until the late afternoon that its mission became clear. We had scarcely reached our destination when another change in orders was received. We were now to proceed the advance of the 80th Division in the direction of the Enns River and attempt to contact the Russians. The 80th Division had been pushing forward with terrific speed for they were meeting no resistance. The only factor that slowed their progress was the unbelievable number of German and Hungarian soldiers who were surrendering along the highways. With its new assignment, the 3rd Reconnaissance Squadron moved off in the area of Strasswalschen in the direction of Wocklebrook a city which it, alongside troops of the 80th, secured against minimal opposition. The next day, on the 5th of May, the squadron continued on at the head of the 80th Division and reached Thayer without incident, prior to receiving new orders which directed it to secure the Gemunden and Benzi area on the division's right flank. Starting out from the town of Gemunden on the 6th of May, the squadron's A Troop, mounted in M8 Greyhounds, a third platoon of F Company and M24 Chaffee light tanks headed south to Abenzi. Arriving here at around midday, the American troops were establishing outposts in the town when they were informed that there was a prisoner camp somewhere nearby, prompting A Troop to dispatch several patrols to establish its location. Leaving town, one of these patrols, in M8 Greyhounds, travelled south and soon stumbled across a set of gates flanked by barbed wire fences that marked the entrance to a camp. From their vehicles, the American troops took brief notes on what they had seen before returning to Abenzi to report their discovery. A short while later, at around 1445, another patrol of two M24 Chaffees from 3rd Platoon returned to the camp to establish if there were any German troops still holding the area. Commanding one of the M24s was Staff Sergeant Robert Persinger, who recalls, you could smell the smell of death all over, and we made a right hand turn onto this road, and there, 100 to 200 feet away, was this concentration camp. There were people standing behind the barbed wire fences. Rolling slowly towards the main gate, Staff Sergeant Persinger noticed two German soldiers guarding the camp entrance. It later transpired that these two men had been posted as camp guards when the SS left the region only a day earlier. The two guards put up no resistance, instead handing their rifles over to the American troops, whilst the prisoners opened the large wooden gate and allowed the two tanks to enter the camp itself. Driving onto the camp's roll call area, the crews of the M24s distributed what rations they had on them, as thousands of prisoners began crowding around the tanks to greet their liberators. Although reluctant to do so, the ten American tankers dismounted from their vehicles, and after being hugged, kissed and thanked, were shown around parts of the camp by a group of English-speaking prisoners, which the 3rd Cavalry Squadron history details. Abuse and disease were rampant. The prisoners lived in the vilest filth imaginable. The stench from the camp was nauseating. Many of them had been reduced to the point of eating their own dead. The camp was in the same class as the more notorious ones at Belson and Buchenwald. Apparently, the crematorium had failed to keep up with the death rate, for many of the barracks were filled with waiting bodies. In the late afternoon on the 6th of May 1945, more men from 3rd Platoon F Company came forward to assist, and at 1652, the following message was transmitted to the headquarters of the 3rd Cavalry Group. There are 16,000 political prisoners in a Benzi concentration camp, badly in need of food and medical care. What shall we do about them? On receiving this message, the headquarters of the 3rd Cavalry Group authorized the men of A Troop and 3rd Platoon to seize any food supplies found in the town and distribute them amongst the prisoners. 
In the meantime, the group headquarters would contact 20 Corps and 3rd Army headquarters under which the unit was serving and work with them to get more help to the region. Consequently, in the evening of the 6th of May, the American troops closed off all the bakeries and shops in Abenzi to civilian use, requisitioned their supplies and throwed them up to the camp. Despite this, and the fact that 3rd Squadron's medical detachment was working tirelessly around the clock, the situation in the camp remained critical going into the 7th of May. On that day, Colonel James Polk, commander of the 3rd Cavalry Group, arrived in Abenzi to assess for himself the situation, and at midday he contacted 20 Corps headquarters and outlined that it was Imperative we get 15 truckloads of C and K rations at once for concentration camp. Conditions are indescribable. There is no, repeat, no food in this area. Medical assistance and administration vitally necessary. Several hours later, a group of 20 Corps administrative staff arrived to assist the 3rd Cavalry in controlling the camp, as did J. Mallon Heslop, a US Army photographer, who was dispatched to document and photograph the scene. It wouldn't be, however, until the 9th of May, the day after the war in Europe had ended, that assistance, in the form of the 30th Field Hospital, and later the 139th Evacuation Hospital, arrived to take over medical responsibility for the camp. Following the arrival of this medical support, A Troop and 3rd Platoon would remain in the Abenzi area until late May 1945, when the whole of the 3rd Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron transferred to France, in preparation for the voyage home to America. Although homeward bound and able to see their loved ones once again, many of the men in the 3rd Cavalry would still be affected by what they had seen at Abenzi for years to come, with the squadron's history reflecting that. No man of the 3rd Cavalry will forget that concentration camp. They'll not soon forgive the dainty Frawlins and sedate Burgers, who comprised the progressive, educated, nice German people and who lived so close to the camp, yet pretended ignorance of his existence. <laughs>